Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. I'm out here in the shop today and I thought I'd share some of my thoughts with you about uh, how to build these ultra lightweight rigid wing hang gliders or composite hang gliders. And uh, I'm not going to need that one, so I'll throw that away. Uh, back in the day when I did my original wing, as they, uh, the little saying they have these days, to me it seems like just yesterday, but they would say back in the day because it was like 1985. So a long time ago, I built uh, one of the early composite foot launchable gliders. In fact, my original wing turned out to be the first foot launchable aircraft that achieved sailplane performance, what is considered a sailplane, which is a 20 to 1 glide ratio. So it was, it was fun, it was cool, and in the process of uh, designing and building these D-tubes, I had to invent some uh, methods for making the components, uh, because they, it just simply hadn't been done, they didn't exist, you had to figure it out as you went. So I, I know I've shown this in other videos, but here's one of the ribs. You know, the whole thing folded up for transportation. I'll put up a picture here of what it nominally was like when you folded it up. Actually, it was two packages rather than one of the two D-tubes, and the ribs were all folded up in the fabric. It was rolled up. Now, making these ribs, figuring out how to make them so that they didn't have any end bracing in them here. You know, there's no bracing up and down and yet they are strong enough and stiff enough to take the loads and the elevon loads, you know, when their elevon's attached on the trailing edge, was a tad tricky. I went through 13 different methods of making these ribs before I got one that had the appropriate strength, the weight ratio. So it was quite the job. Uh, and, and the trick is, how do you hold a curved shape? And this is without making molds. Couldn't stand to make, you know, uh, about 12 different molds uh, just to make you know a set of ribs so without molds how do you make this how do you hold the right shape of the airfoil while you get these things encased in composite material uh, and I eventually achieved the right answer and this thing's been through been hither and yons and crashed into Torrey Pines and all that and this rib is still in great shape it has held up well. The attachment bolt on the D-tube came a little loose on one side, but you know, it was a crash. Uh, and you can't really see all of the rib because I have the uh, sleeves on here. The sleeves have Velcro on the top, which is what I used to attach the sail to the ribs, uh, which was a nightmare, by the way. Uh, and there's better ways of doing that now. Uh, but the actual rib itself, here's a section of one of the pieces that I made ended up looking like this, you know. And what you have uh, is a uh, multi-material core that's then has carbon fiber cap strips top and bottom, unidirectional, and then it's wrapped in fiberglass. And, th uh, and that's all done wet, so massively messy job. And uh, the question on how to hold it to shape uh, because you can't just take foam, wrap it in fiberglass and bend it around a mold, I've tried that, because the fiberglass starts to pull to one end or separate, it's just, it's a nightmare. So as I went through all of these different designs, I stole an idea from the indoor rubber band powered model airplane world, uh, where they take a flat sheet of balsa and they cut the rib shape out of it. You know, it's just a small skinny arc like this. And at the middle of the rib, the grain runs this way, and it runs this way down here, but the rib's at an angle, and it's, it's kind of a weird thing. But those ribs work out really well, and they're super lightweight. Uh, and I thought, it finally dawned on me, I can use that same technique to make these ribs, uh, using the uh, blue Dow Styrofoam core. So here's a half inch thick blue Dow, Dow Styrofoam XPS uh, with a sheet of one 32nd inch balsa wood bonded on either side. Now, I think the ribs that I did for my glider, I bonded that balsa on with uh, like some 3M90 or 3M77 adhesive. This is just a temporary thing to hold the mold. And then I could come in here and cut an airfoil shape out of this. And the balsa on either side of the foam would keep the foam from bending. And the foam gives me enough uh, size to the object so that when I uh, put uh, the composite materials on it, there's plenty of stiffness. Uh, and, and it's much lighter than just cutting it out of, 
you know, half inch thick balsa. Uh, so this is extremely light core material. Uh, you see my other video, I'm talking about how to do something similar with foam and honeycomb core. Uh, and this allowed me to cut the curve shape of the rib. The curve shape that you see here was literally cut out of this curve shape here was cut out of a piece of this. It was pretty handy dandy. And then we had a very messy job of put on the carbon fiber, wrap it with fiberglass, and boy, what a mess, epoxy dripping everywhere. But we got them done. Took a long time to make all the ribs, but they're extremely lightweight and just bulletproof strong. These things are just so incredibly strong and they weigh next to nothing. And, you know, pretty cool solution at the time, and you didn't need molds of any kind. So, for a home builder, perfect solution. And then, in the intervening 30 years, <laughs> no, I'm sure it came along sooner than that, and somewhere between then and now, they came out with these handy-dandy braided sleeves. This is a sleeve of carbon fiber fabric that's like the... Uh, the finger trick things, right? You know, you put your finger in it, you pull, you can't get your finger out. Uh, they, they get tighter as you pull them together. But it's a tube. It's a braided tube of carbon fiber yarns. Let me see if I can get my finger in there. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's stuck. <laughs> there, like that. And when I saw this stuff, I thought, oh, problem solved. It would be so simple. You know, you take this stuff, and look at this, you can just take... You could either have balsa on it or no balsa, and you can take this sleeve material and slide it over the foam, slide it on there, pull it up tight, and then impregnate it with resin. And then you can bend it on a mold, like this, because this is all one sleeve, and the type of weave that you have here is very flexible. And, and if it's pulled tight, it's going to stay in place, like that, as you put it on a mold. I thought, wow, that would have been a hundred times easier than what I had to do thanks to somebody, you know, figuring this stuff out on how to braid this stuff into a tube. So if you ever need to make ultra lightweight ribs uh, for your ultralight aircraft, whether it be powered or glider, give this a thought, you know. Uh, think about the core material that you're going to use, whether you're going to put any balsa or anything on it, and uh, use these sleeves. Just slide a sleeve over it, wet it out, ta-da, rib, you got a rib. Um, uh, handy dandy way to make ribs. Uh, I don't need that methodology right now for what I'm doing, but maybe one of you can make use of it someday. And uh, I hope that that idea uh, sparks somebody's imagination. Uh, actually, where I could have used it, now that I think of it, right during the middle of the video, I think of it. The front of my pilot's cage on my current wing is, is got a nice parabolic shape to it. And I made that by putting in a plywood core uh, a cru cruciform core like this, you know, and filled it with foam, sanded it round so it looks like a tube, and then I overwrapped with uh, a, a satin weave or uh, type cloth, that a carbon fiber cloth that is uh, flexible in both directions and go around compound curves. It was still really messy job, and I had to do the upper half and then the lower half and overlap them. And boy, what a, what a challenge that was. If I'd known about this at the time, I could have used this. I could have just built up that framework, put the foam on it, put it to shape, and just run this around it. I could just you could go around the curve so easy. And on there, I only have one layer of five ounce or six ounce fabric, which is about what this is. So I could have just slipped one of these sleeves over, wetted it out, and I'd been good to go. And it probably would have saved me, uh, saved me some epoxy for sure. And it probably would have saved me, oh, a half a day's worth of fiddling around. Uh, so uh, that would be another place to use it if you're making uh, curved, uh, simple curve uh, tubing. Uh, you could make it that way. Just provide a, a foam core, foam and or wood core of the appropriate shape and then just slide the sleeve over. And, it, and uh, if I make another pilot's cage, I'll certainly do that. Anyway, okay, as I always say, fly safe. Bye for now.